Hello and welcome to the Q Today Show for April 24th to April 27th. I'm one of your hosts, Mitch Vick. And I'm your other host, Alison Duddy. We've got a great interview coming up with our own Nate Bello in conversation with Bill Carter of the Spinal Cord Society, so stay tuned a little bit later for that. Before we get into the news, uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and remind you our weekday show runs from Tuesday at 5 p.m. to Friday 8 a.m. and the weekend offering airs from Friday at 5 p.m. to Tuesday at 8 a.m. We broadcast every day 8 a.m., 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. If you have any comments on the program, you can reach us by our email at qtoday at qcatv.ca. And as always, thanks to the Quinell Caribou Observer for providing some of the news stories that we cover here. Uh, if you would like information on how to sponsor us, feel free to give Nate a call at 250-992-3650. Okay, we just give the highlights here on Q today. If you want to read the full story, pick up your copy of the Car Quinell Caribou Observer. And our first story of the today is uh, from me, and I'd like to talk to you about the midterm supply project. And basically, a little controversy on this story. Um, the government uh, made a report available online by accident, and it was posted on the government website. Our MLA, Bob Simpson, brought the content forward when he retrieved it from the site, and after which it should be noted it was immediately removed. And the, the, the details of this report, it paints a pretty disturbing picture of our uh, supply of timber for specifically Quenelle in, in our case, but also for Prince George and Williams Lake. According to the report, the economical supply of dead pine in, in the Quenelle TSA is about 1.5 years. It will become uneconomical and unviable to harvest dead pine after one and a half years. Um, if you consider the long hauls involved in pulling this timber out. At this point, Bob Simpson says, we'll start to see mill closures and severe job losses. Minister of Jobs and Tourism uh, Minister Pat Bell commented that the government is a couple months away from having a broader public consultation on the project. Um, back in 2010, it's noted that Bell commented uh, on, a credit, uh, on a Central One Credit Union report um, that there would be job losses and in fact we would have uh, job growth in the area. Uh, interesting to see if his opinion has changed on that uh, since that statement in 2010. They're saying at this stage we could lose up to 11,000 jobs or greater in the region if there is no planning done. Land use changes including such things as harvesting smaller trees, logging areas which may not have been logged before such as areas that are environmentally sensitive or areas that have scenic value or are noted for their biodiversity could be opened up for logging. This could lessen the pending job loss, but I think we'd agree those are tough, uh, tough questions to ask when we're considering logging areas that really shouldn't be logged or haven't been logged in the past for good reason. Minister Bell advised that we should see public discussion later on in the summer, and I for one am very interested in this conversation, not only for the future of the region, but specifically uh, how we can avoid major job losses for Quinell in the next couple of years. And I, for one, am very concerned that the time frame is extremely close. We're yeah. talking 18 months, and it's going to be tough going getting uh, fiber and uh, logs into our mills. And 18 months goes by pretty darn that quick. Is we all know that could be catastrophic for Quinell. It's for a heartbeat. Quinell. That's exactly. just a heartbeat away. Yeah. So. Definitely, sure. the sooner that the government is willing to table this and really have a conversation, we need to put our heads together and figure, figure some of these uh, tough things out for sure. I just wonder if these conversations would be happening if that hadn't accidentally been put up on the website. Definitely. Quite honestly. Yeah. So moving along, uh, Annie Gallant wrote an article for last week's Observer on the second annual Monster Run, which is coming up this summer on July the 13th and 14th. The Monster Run is a long-distance endurance motorcycle event dedicated to raising funds for muscular dystrophy. This year's 1,900-kilometer run begins in Quinell, with riders heading up to Prince George, over to Jasper, and down to Lake Louise. Uh, from there, they cut over to Edgewater, Golden, taking in Vernon and Kelowna, and then up to Merritt, on to Kamloops, and over to Cache Creek, and then the run back home to Quinell. The deadline to finish is 30 hours, 
but if you complete it in 24, you qualify for the iron butt recognition. And I would say you'd have to have an iron butt to do 1,900 kilometers in 24 hours. Uh, organizer Stu Castle hopes to duplicate last year's run, which raised more than $8,000 for mus Muscular Dystrophy Canada. Uh, in the article, Castle stresses that the Monster Run's primary concern is safety of the riders, adding that this is an endurance race or an endurance run, not a race. Uh, riders are encouraged to take whatever breaks that they need uh, to get home safely. If you are interested in finding out more or taking in this year's Monster Run, you can check out their website at quinellbiker.com or you can contact the organizer, Stu Castle, as I mentioned at 250-992-6325 or his email at ular, which is U-L-A-R, at shaw.ca. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. I, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast for sure. Oh, I and know that. Uh, I can definitely attest to after six to eight hours on a motorcycle, iron butt is definitely an appropriate term for, for that. Yeah. So good, good luck to those no guys. No kidding, yeah. yeah. Our next story sees us uh, discussing um, George Abbott's recent visit, visit to Quinell. He, of course, is the Minister of Education. He was in town recently and he had the opportunity to discuss issues with teachers. A uh, primary concern was Bill 22. On the teacher side of things, Bill 22 strips many items from the collective agreements that were agreed upon years ago. On the government side of things, Bill, C20, uh, Bill 22 addresses language in collective agreements across the province and accounts for fair postings and fi fillings and addresses more consistent evaluation. Also of concern to teachers and are the, is the appointment of Charles Jago as, media, as mediator. Um, their concern is that he is biased and the BCTF uh, president wrote him and actually asked him to resign from the process. The BCTF is also requesting under B Bill 22 that Jago be removed and of, of which they have filed a petition to, to see that happen. Outstanding issues on class size and composition still need to be worked out and the teacher's contract as well uh, is also incur uh, looking into delivering back report cards from earlier in the year and uh, recently they've agreed that these will be done by the end of April and also agreeing on a date for June report cards. So still some, still some challenges on that topic for sure. And although uh, the bill was passed and apparently things are moving along, definitely still some, uh, some ruffled feathers there and some uh, real concerns on, on that bill. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It could get interesting again, I think. So moving on to our next story. Uh, recently, the Quinell Festival of the Performing Arts had their piano festival, as well as the vocal and choral festival. The committee hired professional teachers of each discipline to come to Quinell, watch and listen to our local students and give gentle feedback. Uh, international professional singer Catherine Van Campen not only assessed the skills of entrance in the QFPA, but also provided workshops to help students improve their singing ability. Uh, in the article, one student, uh, Sophia Traber, talked about how much detail Van Campen brought to the workshop and how she'll work on all the techniques that the adjudicator explored with her. Voice teacher and coordinator of Quinell Festival of the Performing Arts of Vocal and Choral Discipline, Kathy Heinzelman, said this type of adjudication really helps the students understand and better perform uh, during upcoming exams. She added with a professional adjudicator, it's reassurance that they're working on the right repertoire and that she's not pushing the students too far, which the article mentioned probably isn't likely. It sounds like Kathy's a bit of a softy. Um, but with the festival now complete, several local students in dance, vocal, piano, speech and dramatic arts were selected by adjudicators to compete in the provincial festival at the end of May. So congratulations to those students and you know it's a good way of, of improving your skills is to be critiqued like that by people who are that step up from you. That's well, so the only way to learn. Sounds, right? That's right. Yeah, sounds like a, a good program. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Well Rich. on the learning uh, theme uh, we're pleased to announce a, a special group of teachers in school district number 28 and would you believe that these teachers are between 8 and 10 months of age? 
I couldn't believe it when I read it, but it's true. And they've been on the job for six months already. Wow. These babies are part of a program <laughs> called Roots of Empathy, which was introduced by Mary Gordon to school children in Toronto in 1996. At the heart of this program, elementary school children are exposed to the interactions of babies with their parents, and locally it's facilitated by Cynthia Bernier. Um, basically, from, from what I understand, uh, these, these young infants are coming to the classroom with their parents, and uh, what the children are exposed to is the different emotions the babies express and how, uh, how to interpret these emotions. And uh, it basically helps prepare children to be more empathetic to the needs of, of people's feelings and emotions. And uh, for instance, when they cry, what does this mean? And it really assists uh, school, school age children, you know, elementary age uh, school children, uh, interpret these emotions and better prepare themselves. During the 27-week program, nine different themes are explored of which the children can truly appreciate the development of babies. Um, some of the uh, behaviors they've noted uh, from children who've gone through this, uh, this uh, program are that bullying is decreased, um, people's appreciation or the students appreciate and respect the feelings of others, it lowers aggression as well. So definitely uh, some good benefits to having these children get to experience um, sort of the, that special bond between mother and, and, and baby and father and baby as well and uh, really uh, understanding the emotions and uh, respecting the, uh, the sort of the special uh, relationship there. Um, and uh, many elementary schools in our area are participating in this program. So really? I think that's a pretty neat uh, concept and obviously uh, if, it's, if it's affecting bullying in a positive way I think uh, it's got to be a good great. thing for yeah. sure. Yeah that sounds really interesting and just you know, to have kids picking up on people's and, and emotions from little kids and stuff, there's so much texting and, and emailing and stuff that you're not dealing one-on-one -on -one with people so much anymore. So it's great to see that sort of being worked on with the kids growing up, right? Yeah, it's human, re human interaction and uh, That's right. I think it's great that kids are, are exposed to that at a young age For to help sure. them be more empathetic yeah, and respectful. Right. Yeah, It's great. Good one. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. So moving on into sports now, the expansion of the Prince George Lacrosse Association has increased the opportunity for growth in lacrosse with the addition of a new team from Quinell. Uh, the new team, dubbed the Wildfire, draws inspiration from, uh, for their name from its junior level counterpart, the Crossfire, so keeping with that fire theme. Uh, the move started with successful exhibition games between Prince George and Quinell over the last couple of years. They had good fan turnout uh, as well. We have 22 players on the provisional roster. Captain Pat Gibbs said the focus now is to build a core of players who will solidify the team and bring new players in. Uh, Lisa Scott is the president of the Quinell Lacrosse Association and she's optimistic about the season and the way the team is coming together and is also convinced from numbers at the exhibition games that fan support will be there as well. Um, basically the winners in this deal are the players themselves as previously the city had nothing to offer them by way of an organized team after age 16. Um, but because of the still present gaps between lacrosse leagues the age range for the current team will spread from 17 all the way up to age 48. The Wildfire will be playing eight home games at the Twin Arenas over the course of the season, with most happening on Thursday nights. Uh, their first game will be against the PX Pub Bandits on April the 26th at 8 p.m. And the team is also still looking for a major sponsor to help out with equipment, uh, things like jerseys and stuff like that, if anyone out there is interested. So, you into lacrosse, Mitch? No lacrosse? I don't, honestly, I don't know a lot about it. It's, Me neither. It's a compelling sport. It's mm -hmm. our, the heritage of our, of our country. It's the first sport, yep. if, if I'm not Everybody mistaken. Everybody thinks hockey is our national no. sport, but... <laughs> no, it all started with lacrosse. That's right. So, yeah. I'd love to learn more about it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going and checking it out because I can't say... I've never actually seen a lacrosse game be played, so it would be interesting to yeah. see what it's all about anyways. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, next uh, story we have is about the U19 Ring at Nationals which definitely turned out to be a learning experience for, for a very young uh, squad of northern girls uh, from, from BC, northern BC, who went to play. Coach Melinda Wilson said they played very well and they learned a lot. Uh, although their record was only two and six, 
it's a little bit misleading. Uh, these girls obviously came from, from uh, our community and other northern communities, and they were playing against other girls uh, from eastern Canada as well as southern BC, and they had to deal with some differences in play for sure um, uh, from what they articulated. Uh, some of these eastern teams were, were fielding squads that were able to change their play on the fly from offensive to defensive styles, so that threw them for a loop a little bit. Also, uh, the referees we're, we're calling the games very tight and that took some adjustment. Unfortunately, in a couple of those games, the girls uh, got caught into penalty trouble and um, they were describing in one game, they played three on five. And for anyone that knows anything a little bit about hockey and whatnot, three on five is devastating. And they played three on five for one whole period. Oh they, and they were the three. Ooh, so that's, that's pretty bad luck for them. Um, also, they noted that of their squad, most of the, of the girls were younger. Um, some of the squads from, uh, from Eastern Canada and beyond uh, were playing with girls in high school and actually first year college. So a little bit of a disadvantage that way. But uh, nonetheless, they learned a lot about the different styles of play, a great learning experience, and uh, a great way to bring uh, the athletes, the girls uh, from Northwestern BC together. Hopefully next year they'll be able to get some more practice time in together because that would certainly help in their results as well. And you know, if Ron was here, he would be saying, you can't score goals from the penalty That's, box. He's, you know what, <laughs> he's right on that. Going on in my head when you were talking about I that. couldn't believe it, though. To play an entire period, <laughs> five on three, That's and you're the team with three. Bad. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of a killer, for sure. Yeah. So as we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, Nate sat down recently with Bill Carter, who heads up the local chapter of the Spinal Cord Society. The Spinal Cord Society is having their annual walk and wheel coming up on May the 5th. So let's take a look now at Nate in conversation with Bill Carter. Thanks, Mitch and Allison. I'm here with Bill Carter. Hi, Bill. Hi, Nate. How are you? I'm really good today. Good, thanks. It's spring. It's, things are changing. <laughs> yeah. It's getting there. It's good. And you're getting ready for your big walk? Yes, it's uh, happening May the 5th, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, 10 a.m. And it takes place from Seal Tingley Park, right at the Steam Shovel. Okay. And people don't have to register, you just come on out. Um, you can donate there if you choose. Uh, there's refreshments at no cost to the participant. And we just urge people to come out. It's not a race night, it's mm -hmm. not a, you know, nothing competitive. Just bring a friend, meet somebody new, mm -hmm. and support our cause. Right, and it's a beautiful day in we spring. Hope and yeah, we hope it's going to be Oh, nice. it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I know that. So. Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your walk. Uh, you, you've 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 been having it for quite a few years now. Yeah, this will be the sixteenth time. Yeah, but it's not annual. We try to avoid the word annual uh, just because we we don't want a charity to go on forever. Yeah, that's, that's right. Because there's got to be an end, right? We hope. Yeah. And what is the end? The the end for us is uh, the Spinal Cord Society's main focus is to cure chronically injured spinal cord people. And what people have to understand is you're chronically injured after six weeks post-injury. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, you know, there are occasions when you may get something back, but it's very, very rare. Mm. And so the goal is to uh, just get people out of chairs, but also, uh, that being said, Nate, you want to prevent people from being in them. Um, there's always going to be spinal cord injuries. That's going to happen, mm -hmm. even when there's a cure, but that's the thing. Once the cure is there, um, then if you're injured tomorrow, you can hopefully walk again. I mean, that's, that's the goal. And so uh, you must uh, keep track of research uh, that is being done. Yeah. Um, what's the state of the research now? Well, right now, I know with the Spinal Cord Society, I can't speak for other groups. They've got a program called TANES. Um, TAIN? TANES. It's uh, a TAIL, mm -hmm. believe it or not. It says TAIL and it's Nerve Electrical Stimulus. And what that is is um, it's in the rat stage now. Mm -hmm. They've shown that rats can walk again post-injury uh, with the work they've done. Um, so now they're hoping to get the humanization trials mm -hmm. soon. And I think I saw that just uh, last week on TV. Um, okay. Somebody walking with electrical impulses yeah. that were doing that. They're, the electrical impulses are actually doing the walking for well, a person? Well, the, the, the goal here is not to have any of that sort of thing. Okay. So. It, the goal is to actually make it a medical. Mm -hmm. So I know they, they, it's, it's, 
it's an electrical stimulus, but once you get the muscles moving and things like that, oh, okay, it's good. It, you're on your own. It's an autogalous approach, which means it's on it's through you. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, okay. for anti-rejection, if they have to inject things mm -hmm. into you, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to prevent uh, re rejection, that's the deal. So in your, your research, uh, Spinal Cord Society, yeah. um, is that provincial or? No, it's actually international. It oh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. was started actually, believe it or not, by a guy in the States. Uh -huh. um, but uh, we do have a Canadian head. Uh, his name is Jocelyn Lovell. Um, he used to be an Olympic cyclist in the 80s, uh, 70s, 80s. And he was unfortunately injured by a gravel truck training. So, but he's our Canadian guy. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's an international group. Yeah. And so, uh, there you, we have a chapter in, in Quinella, or is it just... Yeah. No, nope. oh. chapter in Quinella, there's chapters in all kinds of places. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing, though, it's, it's to encourage others uh, that are maybe watching, that have a friend in another community mm -hmm. that wants to know how to get involved. Um, they can sure feel free to call me and I can instruct them as how to do it. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And if they have the same goals as we have as a uh, cure... Mm -hmm. rather than care, then, uh, then yeah, where are your answer? So that would be uh, probably the difference between something like the Rick Hansen Society? Is, there is, is a difference, yes. Right, so you're really into the cure, yep. and so um, other people can do other things in terms of care. Sure. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's just it. And then it's not, uh, it's just a, how would you say, philosophical difference between mm -hmm. the Hansen Foundation versus this one. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. um, you respect that group. But it's just, uh, this is just a cure thing. He's more accessibility, that kind of thing. Right, like that. right. So, um, Bill, um, you've been in a wheelchair now for um, 17 years, yeah, were you telling me before? And, and so, what, what, how did it happen? Well, I was a truck driver for a local guy here in town, mm -hmm. local gentleman, and uh, just one of those bad days at work when you couldn't steer on the mud, and mm -hmm. I, met a, I met a hunter on a bush road, and oh. that's where I went. So oh. it, it happens in a split second. Your life mm -hmm. has changed. Right. And uh, I think, too, a lot of cases, um, as you're older, like myself, I was 32 then, uh, it's tougher to adapt with a life change mm -hmm. like this as so, opposed to when you're younger. So people who are younger, um, they could adapt better. Why, how, how, why would that be? I, I, in my case, I can only speak for myself, right. but I know that all of a sudden you lose your livelihood. And mm, that's right. a real mm. concern for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know your livelihood. You you, uh, you want to do things with with your kids. My my mm -hmm. kids were four at the time, and and uh, so you kind of yeah. yeah you're there to bend mm -hmm. an ear, but you're not really there to kick a soccer mm -hmm. ball with them or shoot a puck or something. Right. So you got to uh, find different ways to interact with That's people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was talking to you before. You don't consider it an illness. No. But it's possible illnesses can spawn from. Yeah. A, this is a this is an injury. And mm -hmm. it can happen to anybody, unfortunately, and it will mm -hmm. continue. Um, but no, uh, it, illnesses can spawn from spinal cord injury um, through pressure sores. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most common things. Um, bladder infections, urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. It's not just your legs and limbs or mm -hmm. arms that are affected. It's the internal workings of your body. Also, um, you know, I mean, um, let's be realistic. It can bring on depression for people, mm -hmm. um, and I know people uh, suicides, and mm -hmm. that's an unfortunate thing. And this is, you know, something but it, we don't want to see. It that. is a reality. We maybe we don't want to talk about it, but the reality is, mm -hmm. it, the reality is there, and so uh, that must be a big motivator for you to get uh, to get people involved in, in things like your walk. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's something that's important. I mean, you don't want to see anybody living a life of depression or, or, or pressure sores. I mean, mm -hmm. those pressure sores can kill you. Mm. Um, you know, if the infection gets bad enough into the bone, it can actually take your life. So you don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, what ha what's going, what do you, what do you want to see this, this year in terms of this walk? Are you are you are you hoping to um, get more and more people every year? I guess. Oh, of or? course. I mean, you, you always worry. Your biggest worry is nobody's going to show up, right? Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's always obviously a concern. But yeah, we we'd love to see people come mm -hmm. on out and participate. I mean, you know, it's it's a, it's an hour out of your day. I know that people are busy and they have things to do, and you have to pick and choose what you like to do for your right. charitable things. And we're hoping people choose us. Okay. So let's. What's the date again? May the fifth. Right. Uh, Ten a.m. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And again, we leave from Seal Tingley Park. 
And for more information? Uh, feel free to call me anytime, 250-992-5996 uh, at home. 250-992-5996. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, so if there's one message that you want to tell our audience out there, okay. what would it be? Simply that I was walking one day and I wasn't walking the next. And the whole goal is to hopefully, uh, with a cure, you won't have to sit in a wheelchair. I and mean, that's, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, life is a lot easier, I guess, uh, being out of a chair as opposed to being in one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's our goal. Well, thanks a lot, Bill, yeah, for being you. with me today. I, I really appreciate it, yeah, and you, you know, a lot of people admire you for doing this. And uh, keep going. Well, we'll try. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Now back to Allison and Mitch. Thanks for that, Nate and Bill. Well, thanks to QCATV.ca, some folks with Quinell ties are able to show to stay on our show and stay in touch with happenings in their town. We received a great letter from Darren. Uh, Darren Brown. Darren lives in Victoria but has also lived in China after leaving Quinell about 10 years ago. He says, I just found your Q Today show on your YouTube channel and I think it's first rate. That's great feedback. <laughs> we I, like that kind. We do, yeah. <laughs> A great thing for us Quinell expats to tune into. I was wondering if you would be interested in having some small segments produced that might show Quinell expats and what they're up to in other communities within the province, within Canada, and those living internationally. I could set something up for those expats living in Victoria, where I am currently located, and there are many of us, if you would be interested. Finally, a shout out to Mitch and Allison. Great to see you putting our humble little town on the map. And Nate wrote back, we think it's a great idea. Who knows? You may be hearing from some of your old friends on our show in the near future. So that's great. Awesome, Good yeah. Feedback. We always like feedback good or bad we like to know you know what you think how you think we're doing here on Q today and what we can um, what we can do to improve so yeah send them on in so thanks Darren for that we appreciate it uh, next up our photo of the day comes to us once again from who else uh, Dave Sutton uh, he attended the country bluegrass, bluegrass jamboree which was held at the senior center this past weekend and he took some great pictures and of course, thanks again to Dave for getting those off to us so soon. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to take a look at what events are happening locally within our community calendar. All right, well, that's it for this show. If you would like to give us any feedback or tips on news that you think we should be covering here on Q Today, uh, you can contact us, contact us at our email, qtoday at qcatv.ca. And if you'd like to be a sponsor or volunteer, you can also call Nate at 250-992-3650 or give John McKenzie at the Shaw Studio here a call at 992-8363. And remember, Q Today is produced by QMAG, Quinell Media Access Group. You can also watch us on the internet on Quinell Community Access TV and apparently also our YouTube channel as well. And the website is www.qcatv.ca and is run by our colleague and friend, Eddie D'Souza. All right, thanks for watching. Remember, our purpose here at Q Today is get a conversation going for Quinell by Quinell. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>